my channel. So today for you guys, I have some Target, Dollar Spot, and Dollar Tree Ray Dunn inspired DIYs to share with you guys. Now these are all really, really easy to do. And in this DIY video, I did use my Cricut. And I want to say that because I want to say you do not need a Cricut to do any of these DIYs. And I share with you guys different ways to do them without having a Cricut and still getting a really nice result. So I hope you guys enjoy all of these. I did a Christmas thing with them, of course, because Christmas time is right around the corner. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up because I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off. Whenever I get the perfect day where Matt can take care of Cooper or he's sleeping really well, I try to wake up early and get things done. So the day you see this is the day that I did all of this. Monday, November 2nd. Edit it, filming, got it up for you guys. So if you enjoy my content, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I'm doing the best that I can when I'm like pretty much just like a sleep. I'm essentially sleepwalking. I'm awake, but I'm very tired and I'm ready to go to bed already. Anyways, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not and click the bell button so you're notified every single time that I upload. With that being said, let's begin the video. I'm going to show you first how to transfer Ray Dunn font onto Dollar Tree products without using a Cricut. And I've done this before and I'm pretty much showing you all over again, but I'm going to simplify it so this video is not long. You want to get a Dollar Tree mug, whichever kind you like. Then you want to pick up some chalk paint. You're going to end up painting the cup with the chalk paint. We need the chalk paint there so we're able to transfer an image and just be able to trace over that image. And with the chalk paint, it gives something for the um, image to attach to. Whereas if you try to just do this directly on the glass, it's just not going to work. So you want something for this chalk and pen that we'll be using to adhere to. So once you have the entire thing painted, whatever color you want, you're going to print out some Ray Dunn wording that you like. You can honestly just go to Google Images, type what you want, and then print out a picture with it. So you resize it print it out and now you're going to take that piece of paper you're going to cut it out and then you are going to apply a bunch of chalk to the back of the piece of paper once you have a bunch of chalk there you're going to use some tape and tape that to wherever it is that you're going to be applying this wording on your mug or if you're doing this to a plate whatever it might be then you want to take a ballpoint pen and trace over that wording and what is going to happen is the chalk is going to start transferring to whatever it is that you're using. It's kind of hard to see the chalk here, but I could see it on my own visibly, but on the camera it didn't pop out too great. So once you have your wording transferred, you take the paper off and then just grab a paint pen and go right over the wording. And I was able to do this with multiple mugs. I just put chalk on the back. I placed the paper down, use a ballpoint pen to go ahead and get that chalk transferred there. And then I go ahead and take my paint pen and go over this. And Dollar Tree does carry paint pens. They're a little bit thicker. This one I had gotten at Michael's. And that's how you're able to transfer the wording without using a Cricut and you don't have to freestyle it. Another thing you can do is just pick out whatever glassware that you want to get at Dollar Tree. And Dollar Tree also carries some rub-on transfers that kind of remind me of Ray Dunn wording. It's not it to the T, but it reminds me of it. So these rub-on transfers, all you have to do is cut out the letters that you want and then you just place the piece of paper, it's like a sticky type of adhesive paper, onto the surface of your glass and then you rub it in and then you slowly peel it off and it's kind of like what you get with a Cricut except you're not actually using a Cricut. So I had ended up making this little bowl that said reindeer treats and I put some marshmallows in the inside of it. I made some other mugs using this. I mean, it's up to you, possibilities are endless. Okay, now if you have a Cricut, all you have to do is put this inside of the Cricut software, type things out, print it out on vinyl, stick it to whatever glassware that you want. I got my Ray Dunn wannabe font off of Etsy and I just transferred that into my program and I just resized it to the sizing that I needed inside of the Cricut um, app and you know I was good to go so I ended up getting some red mugs from Dollar Tree as well as this really pretty plate and all I had to do was take my rub-on transfers and stick them on top of my mugs 
and on top of that plate and it's so easy to do it's a buck and you know you don't have to use a lot of vinyl to write out these small little words it's not like it's going to cost you a whole lot of money it's definitely going to be cheaper than going out and trying to buy a bunch of Ray Dunn mugs which if that's what you want because it's the actual brand I mean you can go ahead and do that but if you want an inexpensive knockoff you can go ahead and try this it's simple to do and it looks so pretty and you can do so many different things I wanted to do the same thing with a Dollar Tree rolling pin. My rolling pin is messed up on the right side. I was originally going to saw it, but then I decided not to because my hand's too messed up to do that. I was going to use a hand saw and I, then I just quit. So there's like a line going through it. So just avoid that. So I got this rolling pin from Dollar Tree. I went ahead and I painted it this red color. The day that I was filming, I was using natural lighting and it would get cloudy at times. So you can see all of a sudden the footage is super dark. But I went ahead, I printed out this Merry Christmas sign on my Cricut and then I just transfer it directly to the rolling pin. And you can do that way that I showed you in the beginning. You can use that method on this because there's some texture and just the paint already there for the chalk to adhere to. So you can do it that way as well if you don't have a Cricut. I also know you can buy like transfer Cricut things already done for you on Etsy if you don't have one. I also ended up getting these small little rolling pin ornaments from Target and they're only a buck. It's the exact same price you would pay for something at Dollar Tree. That's why it doesn't always have to be from Dollar Tree. You can always look elsewhere. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer some words on top of these rolling pins. I then paint some of the rolling pins red. I'd use this flag red paint from Apple Barrel and then I painted some of them white completely up to you paint them whatever color that you like and then I do the same thing I printed out some small little transferred uh, stickers from my Cricut sorry I can't think sometimes like so when I do my voiceovers I try to talk fast I have to get it done uh, because I have to go to Cooper and um, then I just kind of get jumbled in my head a lot because I'm like trying to talk fast but I also hear him like making noises and I'm like is he gonna wake up is he gonna wake up anyhow so yeah I printed out some of those vinyl stickers and then I go ahead and transfer them to these now these little rolling pins are on the smaller side so I will say this when it comes to the transfer stickers they're a little bit harder to do because they are just so small so you might have a hard time taking the little words off of the main vinyl paper but it, it's doable it just takes some patience I'm not really explaining how I typed things into the program and printed it out because I feel like if you have a Cricut you already know how to do that and I mean I don't know anything about Cricut other than what I learned when you install the software so I feel like pretty much everybody knows how to do this already because it tells you what to do in the beginning and all you have to do is go to text and type something out and then print it. It's not something that I think that I have to teach you guys because the Cricut does it itself when you put it inside of your computer it just tells you what to do. Target also has these little whisk that are also a dollar. I went ahead and I cut the ribbon off because I didn't want to actually use these as ornaments. And I go ahead, I paint some of the handles red and some of them white. When it comes to printing out the vinyl uh, pieces of paper, whatever you want to call it, for these whisks, I'll tell you this much, this one's a little bit more challenging than the gingerbread just because the whisk is so small. It's about like an inch. Uh, in length at the bottom so when it comes to the vinyl you have to be very careful when you are removing the excess vinyl paper and then uh, with the sizing you just got to make sure that you size it right which you know if you have a Cricut it comes with that big old like board that it cuts out on top of you know what I think earlier I was saying print it doesn't print it like cuts out the vinyl but it tells you the inches on there and how big you probably want to make your vinyl so all you have to do is take your whisk or your little rolling pin place it on there figure out the sizing that you want and then that way you're able to figure that out what am i trying to say sorry guys i'm functioning on no sleep i keep saying that i'm functioning on no sleep and i'm with cooper all the time my baby so yeah things are rough over here okay moving right along I am going to be using this tear tray to try to do another Ray Dunn project. Now this tear tray I got for $5 at Target in the Bullseye Playground and usually when I make a tear tray using Dollar Tree products that's about as much as it costs me if I'm making a two tier tear tray. If I'm just making a one tier it's not as much as usually around $3. 
But, you know, if you can buy a tear tray already made for the same price you're going to pay to make it, I mean, why not try it? Unless you really have a specific look in mind. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my red paint yet again and I am painting the wood on this tear tray red. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but because I have this really pretty red and white theme going throughout my house, I decided that I wanted the wood to be red. I use the same red paint that I've been using all along. So another way to do the whole Ray Dunn look is to freehand it. If you have really good handwriting, that's great. If you have a steady hand, that's great. What I recommend doing is taking a pencil first and writing the words down and then going over it with a paint pen. Now I was using my really messed up hand that I'm currently wearing like a brace on. So I had kind of a hard time. So I used the pencil first and then I took my paint pen that I got at Dollar Tree. It's the Crafter Square White Paint Pen. And then I just wrote out Merry Christmas on the bottom. And then I wrote out Joy on the top. And I was just looking at the Ray Dunn stuff that I printed out and was trying to mimic that. You more than likely will have an easier time doing this if you don't have a messed up hand. I decided to write Ho 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 all around the sides of those pieces of wood and I feel like if you used a Cricut to do this it would come out really pretty very pretty I mean and if you have good handwriting but my like I said my handwriting's a little wonky right now just because I, I really can't actually write it's a struggle I can write with my right hand too but my right hand is messed up too it's like ugh but I can't wear braces on both hands, so I try not to wear it on the right hand because the right hand's not as bad as my left hand. But there you go. I added the little mugs that I made, the rolling pins and the whisk, including that gingerbread thing that I also got from Target. And look how cute this tear tray is. If I would have used my Cricut on top of there too, oh, perfection. I decided I wanted to do a wreath too. So from Dollar Tree, you can pick up some of their beads and you can paint them whatever color you want. To paint them, I recommend getting bamboo skewers, putting the beads through the skewers, and then you wanna get like a basket Dollar Tree has that have the little holes inside of them. This makes it easier for you to paint your beads because you're able to take the skewer, put it through those holes. I had to make one of the holes bigger to hold the end of the skewer and then you just paint your beads and it just makes it easier to paint your beads because you're able to get all angles of the beads really easily without them all squishing together and you're trying to get inside of every little crevice but it's really really hard it's just easier to do especially if you decide to spray paint the beads i've said this before about dollar tree beads i don't think you get the most bang for your buck though 300 beads will come inside of a pack. They're different sizes and more than likely you're gonna paint them because the colors they come in are too bright. And it takes a while to paint them. You need multiple packs because the beads are smaller. You can just go to Hobby Lobby, get the bigger beads for a dollar, the same price you'll pay for the beads at Dollar Tree. You don't get as many beads in a pack, but they're bigger, they're easier to paint. It's just much more easy. Or you can go to Walmart right now and they're selling bead garland 12 feet in different colors so for $5.98 I got this bead garland that I'm going to be using and then I have so many beads left over for other projects and it's just I get more bang for my buck and I don't have to go through the process of having to paint every little bead so if you have the transportation means to do it I recommend going somewhere else to get your beads versus Dollar Tree. Next up, I'm gonna be using these wire circle things from Dollar Tree. They There are four in like one pack and you just take them off. I'm using the one that's the second smallest one. And then you wanna take a wire cutter and cut it open so that you're able to put the beads through it. Now there are these little things at the very end of them. Uh, I don't even know what you wanna call them. It's just so all those wreaths stay together. I have to remove one so I can get my beads through both ends of them. So to remove it, I use my pliers and I bend that little piece of metal back and forth until it breaks off. So once I have that metal piece off and this little wire circle open, I then take my garland, cut off some of the beads, and then I start putting the beads through the wire. And I do this to both sides. I had so much garland left over like I said that I could use for different projects and that's why I just think it's better to go somewhere else so once I have all the beads through I take some tape and I place it where I cut that wire in half I just wrap it around the two pieces of wire where it's cut 
and I apply multiple layers of that tape and in that area I'm gonna end up putting some greenery so it's gonna end up getting covered so if you don't want to end up doing something like this I know Amazon carries these type of wire circles and they just kind of attach and unattach on their own versus having to use some tape so after I have my tape on I did take some hot glue and I put it at the ends of the beads that are closest to the tape so that those beads stay in place and then I just added a little bit more glue glue to where the other beads meet those end beads just so they just stay there and this wire doesn't open up on me. Next up I'm going to be adding some floral. I'm using these holly berry stems that I got at Dollar Tree. I went ahead and removed the top of them off because I didn't want to use the wire pieces. You can go ahead and cut off each wire piece individually and wrap it around your wreath that way but it's really hard to bend that wire around. So instead I'm taking the leaves, the holly berry, and I'm just gluing it to the bottom of my wreath. And I got to make sure that I'm getting those leaves to attach to the beads otherwise it's gonna fall right off so you make sure they're attaching to the beads and to each other that way it's really secured in place and I went ahead and just used the glue gun to do this after I have all the holly berry glued on I went ahead and attached one of those rolling pins that I got from Target I went ahead and glued that if you want to use Dollar Tree products you can you do the same thing buy something transfer it on there and then just glue it to your wreath and then I decided to add a bow to the very top of my wreath and then that was it for this wreath. How pretty is this thing? This is totally inspired by my mom. She has been making so many of these wooden bead wreaths. So I hope you enjoy these Ray Dunn inspired Christmas items using Dollar Tree and Target Bullseye Playground items. They're all inexpensive to do. You can make so many of them. And again, you don't need a Cricut. I want to emphasize that because I know people will think, oh, I need a Cricut. And you don't. I just showed you a bunch of different ways that you can do it. It's just having a Cricut is nice, convenient, and it looks much more clean than if you're trying to do it by hand and you don't have really good handwriting like I do. So, you know, it's up to you guys. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.